Start the show. There's definitely a thing a lot of people don't understand that Sikhs aren't Arab, and that's like a it's a typical. It, no, it here's the thing. It's 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 disrespectful. Do you think of think these that, in the shower? No, I just did, like the moment before I say them. <laughs> in response to what you've said, dude, uh, there was there was <laughs> I, there was a time in life where you know you ever learn one thing about a culture and then that's your go-to for everything. Of course, I learned about what a Sikh Indian was. What was and so, it? And it was just it was the only thing I knew that was Indian. Oh, and so everyone I ever met are like, "Are you Sikh?" And they're like, "You just learned about Sikhs, didn't you?" I was oh, yeah. like, "Uh huh, you got that right." Do you remember when you learned? New York. So you were twenty-five, twenty-six. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I had a joke in my act, which was 100% true. I didn't know that Japanese people couldn't understand Chinese people. Like, remember, that I used to have that in my act. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and it's not even a joke. It's all stem, stemmed from Dr. Ken. Dr. Ken and I were... Well, at, I thought you, the joke was Japanese and Korean. No, no, Japanese. No, it gets to Japanese and Korean. Oh, but it because starts... Because Dr. Ken. I, I switched it to Steve Byrne because I didn't want to say Dr. Ken because it felt like I was being, like, name dropping because he was famous when I was doing the joke. Uh-huh. Uh, but um, the truth is, Steve, Dr. Ken and I <laughs> were at the Ontario Improv, and we were in the back, back hallway, and there was a Japanese couple trying to get through, mm -hmm. and I tapped Dr. Ken, and I go, I think your parents are trying to come backstage, and he looked out, and he goes, those aren't my parents. <laughs> it's just a Japanese older couple, and I go, are you sure? And he goes, I'm certain. <laughs> and I go, well, what are they saying? He goes, I don't fucking know. And I said, oh, you didn't, you never learned your language around the house? And he was like, no, 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 they're Japanese. And I went, you're not? And he goes, no, I'm Korean. And I went, oh, he was like, you couldn't tell they're Japanese. And then I said to him, no, because they didn't have rising sun bandanas on. And he said, I said, well, kind of, what are they saying? And he goes, are you being serious right now? I go, yeah, don't you, can't you understand a little bit? And he was like, I can't understand any Zero. Japanese. Yeah. And I was like, they're not the same language. And he was like, no, that's why it's called Korean and Japanese. And I went, I was like, I just didn't know because I didn't know any. You didn't know anyone Asian and growing up in Florida. What? What are you talking about? Like you didn't like growing up in Florida. You didn't know a lot of Asian people. Uh, I had I had Asian friends in school. Oh, what was his name? Steve No. Okay, that was quick. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't have one. Yeah, I didn't know any Asian kids. I knew Sam Ho, Sam Ho, and Rhonda Ho. There you go. Yeah, they were. Uh, they I they went to grade school with me, and he threw up in his lunchbox. Hmm. So I'll always remember Sam Ho throwing up his lunchbox in second grade and being like, I literally stood up and I was like, I'm fucking out of here. Second yeah. grade, walked outside. I knew the lambs too. And I knew the lambs. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, but there were also Kim's. So wait, how many Asian friends did you have? Did you have multicultural friends growing up? Let's make this episode about Tom. I'm here to listen. <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, a little, I moved a lot. Remember? So okay, I, let's I, do let's do pop quiz, Tom. Okay. 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 Uh, I'm gonna say a thing, and you just say their names. Okay. Uh, black friend in high school. Our Daryl. Wow. That's and a, Rocky and Jay. You had three black friends. Yeah, we played football together. Oh, not not like. Um, did you ever spend the night at their house? Yeah. No, really? We, we all did. We all hung out. Yeah. Oh, for real? Yeah. And and more white people, or you you were the only one. You're like Eminem and Eight Mile. Uh, no, there was there was a mix. You know, it was mixed up. Really? Yeah. Uh, Latino friends? I mean, yeah, the Casanovas, and um, I'm trying to think of, there weren't that many Latin kids in my school. I mean, but you had Asian kids, black kids. You're like, your school is like Tokyo Drift. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. No, there wasn't that many Asians either. Really? But the white kids sucked in in the uh in the florida school i didn't really you know i only hung out with a few of them oh i'm, I'm thinking of uh ortega too cuban so there's a, there's a, you know a bunch so of so you Cubans. had multicultural friends growing up yeah in every i mean you know the 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 biggest reason was was sports right because yeah. that was that was my friend group especially because i was moving so, so okay so let's start all over you yeah. were born in cincinnati. cincinnati yeah and your dad was ex-military yeah. running a bakery 
What? I, wait. What was your dad? He's always oh, a financial planner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he leaves Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, he was. He, he leaves Vietnam. He goes fought down. In Vietnam. He fought in Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, get, goes AWOL. Goes down to. No, it doesn't go AWOL. <laughs> okay, go wait. AWOL. How did he meet your mom? My dad's best friend married my mom's sister. Oh, how fucking cool is that? Yeah, and then they were doing a gangbang in like '75. <laughs> and uh, so wait, did you? Are you still? Is, are they still all? Fr- oh, it's their mom's sister. Yeah, of course they're still friends. Yeah, they're still close. Really? My mom and her sister speak um, pro- pretty much every day. And do you know that? Is that your cousin cousin? Yeah. That's the guy? That's your cousin? That's the one. Shut the fuck up! So Brian that made McMillions on yeah. HBO, uh, he and I were born two weeks apart next door to each other in, um, you know, same way, same year. And it's his mom and my mom. Holy shit. Yeah. Man, I am the worst friend. I don't listen to anybody. Oh, I know. I am so bad. Oh, it's amazing. It's astounding. You asked me how many sisters I had two weeks ago. <laughs> uh, two? Yeah. I remembered. Yeah. Cha-Cha and Elizabeth. The, uh, Cha-Cha and Elizabeth. <laughs> the, um, so wait, that's crazy. So you're, so then your dad, you, how long did you live in Cincinnati for? Nine years. So you then, and then you moved to Florida? No, then we moved to Minneapolis. Whoa. Yeah. I never knew you lived in Minneapolis. I've mentioned it a number of times. You've never said it once. A hundred times. Never once did you say I was a huge Vikings fan when I was 10. I used to go to Vikings games. No, you didn't. I went to Chris Dolman's football camp. I went to Rich Gannon's football camp. You went to Rich Gannon's football camp? Yeah. Rich Gannon was a fucking legit. I think his brother played for the Bucs. Chris Dolman, rest in peace. He just died. Really? Yeah, a little while ago, a few months ago. So wait, what position did you want to play when you were a a kid? Oh, I want, I mean... When I was a little, little kid, I wanted to be a wide receiver like Jerry Rice, Steve Largent. Those were the guys. But <laughs> and then they're like, hey, Tank, get over in the fucking old offensive line. <laughs> no, then I was obsessed with Lawrence Taylor. And then, and then, oh, like, oh, you have that mentality totally. Yeah, I wanted to be a hundred percent. You did. I can, and he totally was like that. this psycho. And they had the NFL films tapes where he was like talking shit and I oh, was those like, were the best oh man i was just like yeah i was super excited. did you talk shit during football when you played football not really a, a couple times one time my one time my coach told me to i was like what <laughs> and he was like he's like get in his fucking ear talk shit and i was like all right i was like i'm out of breath <laughs> it's kind of hard cool enough about you anyway my one time no <laughs> we're going back to tom but you know i can't not tell a story about myself of course seventh grade seventh grade <laughs> Yes. Seventh, seventh grade, I play football. My parents don't want me to play football. Mm-hmm. I play football for the first time. First game. By the way, I was hospitalized in fifth grade, and my dad had me go to practice the next week. Wait, what yeah. did you get hospitalized in fifth grade? Did you play? Did you play like uh, like uh, not tater tot, but what do they call it? Pee wee, pee wee football. Yeah, full pads. Oh you my know. god, never let them let me Dude, play that. I had a back injury in. I'm 10 years old, and he was like, practice on Monday. Out of the hospital. <laughs> no yeah. fucking way. What was your yeah. back injury? Uh, I, the the term is, uh, I think, spondylolisthesis of the uh, third degree of the fifth lumbar. It's basically a disc kind of pops out. <laughs> it was not a fucking chill injury. I just watched a documentary on Barry Sand documentary, This Football Life, on, docu- on Barry yeah, Sanders. Yeah, those are great. And uh, Barry Sanders' dad said, which is an interesting thing. I just had a... He did a podcast with this this therapist about, and we ended up talking about my dad. But he said, "I'm not." My dad had said this when I was a kid. I'm not your friend. I'm your dad. Mm-hmm. Like there's, and I remember there were. I remember seeing parents that were friends, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Yeah, you guys can drink around here." That was not my parents. I'm no. not your parent. I'm your dad. Yeah, like I'm here to raise you to be a man. I'm not here to just be like buddy boy, like you know. Yeah, and that was your dad, definitely, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he he was he wasn't like he's a bigger hard ass on paper. Like if you read the resume, you're like this guy. Seems Vietnam like, War. That's all I think about. Yeah, that's all I was thinking about it, taking a shit today when I was like, I'm gonna listen today. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that Vietnam stuff. Yeah, if you hear the Vietnam stories and like his. Well, we just watched Platoon with the girls the other day. Yeah, and they're like, uh, "Did this really happen?" And I was like, "A hundred percent." And they're like. Hold on, people were really in, like, they've watched a bunch of war movies now, and so they thought everything was like 1917. Mm. That there were big trenches, you were with your team. Then, and then they're looking at foxholes going like, that really happened? Like in the middle of the night they just charged? And I was like, oh, Vietnam was a fucking nightmare. Yeah, yeah. All the stories are are, hor- are pretty horrible, man. They're hor- like 
like a dude next to you stepping on a mine and like his legs and stomach just blowing open. And also he told me recently that, and I never knew this growing up. He told me that he thinks about those people every day. I think I've mentioned that to you. Yeah. 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 You talked about, he told me that I was like, fuck really? He was like, yeah, every day. I was like, Ugh, Jesus. Like I didn't, re I never realized the, tr the trauma of it. You know? Okay. So think about this. I said this to Leanne the other day. What is the, what is the, if you had to be in the one most swing generation ever, the generation that's seen the most, meaning like, like, like I looked at George and Isla and I thought they will have very little change in their lives. Like they were born with cell phones. Cell phones will always be there. Yeah. Like they, they will never know to like, I was lucky enough. I, cause I, what I, it started with me saying I was lucky enough that I got like 13 years of just walk out the front door and disappear for the entire but, day. But we can't like, that's the thing is every time, whatever the most modern time you live in, like when you're living, you can't imagine the progression 10 years ahead of you. Like, you know what I mean? Like you think that, well, it's just so modern now, but the truth is 10 and 20 years from now, this will be, this will seem like a super. No, but like, okay, but go back. Like if you, like no one would want to be born in the, 1800s because there was no progress you were born a farmer you died a farmer mm -hmm. you only knew like you were born one way and you only knew one thing all the way up to like the i guess you you wouldn't even want to be born in like 1870 because you never saw change well if if you were born in like 19 if you were born 1870 you would see change for no, sure no you only live like be 35 for one well, you could, you could, no, some people were born then that would live longer. You were, you were kind of growing into the industrial age, changing, you know? A little bit, yeah, but like, like I was saying, I remember I, Leanne's grandfather, I got to talk to him before he died a bunch of times, but I said to him, what was it like? Like, what was the, I said, what was the one thing you remember the most out of your childhood? Mm -hmm. And his answer was hot watermelons. Hot watermelons? He's like, man, there was nothing better than a hot watermelon. That sounds horrible. I know. That's, <laughs> that's what I said. I think you'd break it over your knee. Let me guess for you. You wish you were born Berlin, 1925, just in time no, to no. ride that wave. No, but I wouldn't mind it being. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting a taste of the real old school white privilege, like uh, the uncut white privilege. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting a taste of the 1950s, like cocktail in hand go to a meeting oh right like like that old oh, yeah. school white privilege and you would have no skill for the job they gave none you and feel feel completely entitled to it and call oh. your secretary toots and smack, smack her, her on the, the ass. ass yeah, yeah oh yeah. no you would have been the you would have been the documentary was made about they were like look at this piece of shit from the 50s <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't mind just a just one snort of the old uncut white privilege mm, yeah just fucking drinking and driving yeah fucking a cop pulls you over you're like sam what's up bud he's like oh it's you again chrysler yeah. god damn it you got a cigarette and i go huh yeah. lucky here you go <laughs> i wouldn't mind a little taste of that yeah no you've said it a few times now <laughs> yeah i wouldn't mind a little <laughs> sniff of that be cool they should do cool. one day of just remembrance of like, they're like, Hey, you can, you can live in any time period you want today. You can, you could probably propose this to a, I don't know, write your congressman or they something. They should do this during the quarantine. One day, all that you just get the one day for like one week, we pick a different day. Dude, those Mad Men era guys. Oh my God. Like there is, <laughs> they had no fucking rules. They just, they just would drink at lunch. I would love I can't do that. I actually really can't do that. What do you mean? Meaning I can, but I just get a fucking wasted for the day. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not usable again. I can't just go and have a martini I at I was lunch. really honestly take, taken aback by how well you held it together. Um, that time we went to San Francisco for the game. Yeah. And you were drinking all morning and I was like, I'm going to go take a nap. And you're like, all right, I'll see you down. I mean, you'd had, I don't know, a I dozen those. drinks and you were like, it's the thing is, you were not fucked up. You didn't seem like it. No. And then we went to the game, and then we had dinner, and then we got back, and I was like, oh, now I'm definitely going to crash. And you're like, well, now the night's starting. And, like, and then we had... went out and had a cigar. Yeah, but you were fine. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe I could do that. No, I think I, I think you could. I think I shot myself short. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I miss alcohol. Wait, back to seventh grade football. You said you are playing football in seventh grade? Oh, I was playing seventh grade football, and my dad did not want me playing. Like, he really was against it. 
entirely. He thought you were gonna get hurt. Thought I was gonna get hurt. Neck injury, paralyzed immediately. Jesus, really? Immediately. Um, I have fought with him to play, and I was middle linebacker. Mm -hmm. I play like two plays. I, they put me in like halfway through the game, and I first play. I fucking literally grab a guy before he gets through the line. Fucking level him. But it was an accident. Like, I didn't mean to level him. I kind of was not looking. You accidentally leveled him? I, but it looked like I leveled him, but uh -huh. I really ran into him. Uh -huh. Like, and so, but everyone, but he went fucking down mm -hmm. and I was out of it. Like, I was like, huh? And they're like, get away to fuck him up. And I was like, uh huh, uh huh. S two plays after that, interception, run it back to the one yard line. And all of a sudden, I'm the best football player on the team. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm right here. And they're like, you're starting every game. You're in like, and I sucked so bad. And then I got my, I got a neck injury. You you did? I got a neck injury during practice and they had to tape my head to the goalpost. Yeah. To like, let it sit still. Cause it hurt anywhere I moved it. And, and so then, I sat there. Then you were done. And then I was fucking, and then, yeah. and then I played eighth grade and I did not play as good. I, I, I started, but I didn't play as good as I did in seventh, that one game. Dude, in eighth grade, I was involved in a play where three of us broke a guy's leg. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Ow. we just all, it was just perfect. We all, three of us hit the quarterback at like the same oh time. Oh my God. Like this from different angles. Boom, boom. And it was like three pretty big kids, you know, like uh, pretty strong kids. And yeah. We just, we just heard this fucking horrific sound and scream. And then you just saw the leg was clearly broken. Oh my god! Were you this size when you were in seventh grade? Not in, no, but I mean, I was. You seem like a guy who would have grown up early. I did. I had a, I was like shaving pretty early, but but the but the, I was the 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 joy that the three of us felt for hurting that kid so badly <laughs> <laughs> is something that I still carry with me. You know? Did you ever hear? Did you ever hear Patrice O'Neal's? Uh, Didn't he play college football? I don't think he went to college per se <laughs> i thought he did i thought i, don't I think so. i thought i read that once mm, can you look it up look it up i i don't think he went to i don't think he i think he went to prison well one of us is going to feel stupid in a moment he definitely went to prison i know that really yeah for what i don't know all right yeah college that, football games and bowl games yeah he, he died at 41 is that all he was oh my god dude that's like you dying tomorrow. Yeah. But I turn 41 tomorrow. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. Tomorrow's my birthday. I turn 41. No, you're lying. I swear to God. Tomorrow's your birthday? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. I turn 41 tomorrow. What are you doing for your birthday? Oh, I'm partying. <laughs> O'Neill never knew his father. He attended. Da, da, da. He ended up playing his career with three varsity letters and winning a state championship his senior year after graduating. He turned down a scholarship for prison at Northeastern in Boston, which included a grant. Theater, his comedy, grown, blah, 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 blah. okay. Where's the prison stuff? You're wait, wait, wait. I don't know. I'm sure it's not in his Wikipedia. Why would it not be there? They always put that there. I don't know. Keep googling it. He went to pr he went to uh, prison for uh, sexual assault. That's Jesus not sh that's not showing Christ. up on the wiki. Yeah, I know. It's not something I think that he wanted ever brought up really, and I, I think it was something he was scared of. Well, he well he talked about it on Opie and Anthony. He did. It's not a secret. Yeah, okay, it's okay. definitely not a secret. Um. He talked about it on Opie and Anthony. It was something that he was always afraid that if he got successful, it was something they'd dig up on him. And uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I won't. I'm not. I won't even talk about it because I don't think. I know he had his version of it, and I'm sure she had her version of it. So, it, but he ultimately went to jail, and it fucked his friend up. That was uh, that went to jail with him. It fucked him up for the rest of his life because he stopped showering, and they pulled him aside. I, I forget what they called him. They called him Big Baby or something in prison. They they everyone had a name of the state. I listened to it a couple times. I listened to it live. I was driving on the street. Listen to what live? Patrice tell the story live on Opie and Anthony. Hmm. And uh but yeah, and so are you looking for the Yeah, I'm not saying any of the prison stuff. Just what if you type, just Google just it? Just type in Patrice I guess rape, but um no No, I think that's what he went to jail for. Jesus man. Statutory rape. Yeah. All right. So he 60 days in prison for having sex with an underage girl. Oh, she was 15, he was 16 because Massachusetts lacks a close in age exception. That is fucking Well, I weird. think it was I think it was uh, it was a little more complicated. I, I mean, I'll tell you the 
I'm, 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 for me to parrot the story isn't even fair, I think, to everyone involved. But it sounded like it sounded like a bad situation. Of his his advice was, if you do your dirt, keep it to yourself. Don't spread it. Because I guess they did it and they talked about it, and her brother found out, and her brother, and so it, but it got. I'm just saying though, when it's 16, with the, that's not why those laws are written. I think no, but I think no. it was more guys than girls. Meaning it was one girl and like three guys. And so it, it, I think it put her in a bad situation, and she claimed something. Look, I'm not even the right person to be talking about any of this, but, yeah, but it's stuff I've heard, and it's okay. out there. So it's it's All really right. kind of yeah, that really turned into a. He did not play college football, but I wasn't that far. He was offered a scholarship. I mean, yeah, but why would he turn it down? I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, it Northeastern's a pretty good school in Boston. It's, and I'm just saying that, like, it wasn't a, a crazy assumption I made, right? He was a no, he was he, state but, champion in high school and got an offer to a full ride. He uh, he used to tell the story. I used to love the stories. He about was Patrice. enormous. Oh, he was a big dude. Yeah, he was a big fucking dude. Yeah. Um, I used to love the stories he'd tell that he never told on stage that he'd just tell mm-hmm. that you go like he used to tell the story about this guy Tony in his neighborhood mm-hmm. who was cool as shit, and he's like, man, I'd watch Tony and Tony would just go up and just. Tap a tap a bitch on the back of the neck and go, damn, got you. They'd be like, oh, Tony. And he's like, I'd be like on the side going, all right, you got to hit a bitch. <laughs> so I just go up. I didn't I didn't look at the way Tony had his hand. And I got my closed fist. And I'm just like, pow, bitch. <laughs> and it's they were the he would tell the funniest stories. Yeah. You could tell he was kind of trying to work out to maybe take on stage. Now that I, I mean, now that I know at the time he was 41 when he passed, I guess Jesus. he was probably... 30 years old when he was telling me this. He's, he's still a very young comic. It is crazy how you, there's some people who you always imagine them a different, like for some, you know, I always picture. How old was Hedberg when he died? I always pictured uh, Patrice like 20 years older than me, you know? Oh, I felt like he was so older than, t- I was talking to someone yesterday and they're like, do you remember when Patrice said to someone, oh, I was talking to Ari and he goes, do you remember when P- fucking Hedberg was 37? And Geraldo was 44. I started working for Travel Channel when I was 37. Geraldo was 44. That makes sense. Bill Hicks was 32. George Fuck. B- Bill Hicks was 32. That is so fucking young to be losing How your How much hair. work did Hedberg put out? Can you go to his, like, go to his Wikipedia? Scroll down. Click his Wikipedia there. And go to his uh, discography. Yeah, yeah. So, Los Enchiladas was a movie. Yeah, that's wild. It's only, what, four albums? Is that all he put out? Yeah. I mean, it's quite a a legacy for four albums, right? Oh, I I played it for the girls, and Isla loved it. Georgia did not. That makes sense. Yeah. It's totally Isla's lane. That might be her favorite comic ever if she dials in deep, you know what I mean? Dives into it. The girls right now are obsessed with D'Elia. Yeah? They're They're like, there's no way you know him. I was like, I was on fucking Netflix two weeks ago, girls. What the fuck? You don't think I know him? And like, there's people you don't know. You don't know John Mulaney. I go, no, I do. I don't know him, know him. But if I saw him, I'd say hi. And they go, yeah, you don't know him, dad. I go, but fuck, I don't. I know John Mulaney. Like if I, if John Mulaney was walking down our street and I saw him, he would say, hi, Bert. And they go, would he say hi, Bert? Or would he go, oh, hi, and keep walking? And I go, well. Damn, they had it like that on you? Dude, they are fucking brutal to me right now. Brutal. Like. Legit brutal. Everyone, you, you should ask Dalia to uh, just record a message and send it to you. You know what I mean? Like, hey Bert, just checking in. No. I'm a big <laughs> fan, and just be like, see, he does know me. <laughs> you know, I told you this a long time ago. Dalia, when he was on a uh, Vine, he would do this thing where he goes, "So cute" or whatever. Yeah. And Georgia and her friends were doing it. They were in like fucking sixth grade and they were quoting Dalia. Yeah, he created like a, his own lexicon. I mean, it's it's bizarre when you think about it. Like, but, and Georgia was doing it the other day. His special was out. She was watching videos of him laughing hysterically on her phone. Why don't you have, um, ask Chris to do a message to them like, hey girls, your dad asked me to say I'm friends with him and I uh, <laughs> hope you're doing well in your quarantine. Have, have him do one of those. No. <laughs> I'll take care of it. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're uh, they're brutal. They're calling me fetus right now. Fetus? Yeah. Why? <sighs> Why? It's it it's a it's a derivation of a nickname. So like, Bertus? No. Uh, I- Isla, for whatever reason, has never called me dad. She just has always had a nickname for me. 
Big She'll boy. call me dad if I need big boy. We might have to take a uh, break here. Why? I got to shit pretty badly. Are you serious? Yeah. We'll just go and I'll listen to you. From here? Wait, we haven't. Wait, hold on. We're talking about me right now. This whole episode is dedicated to you and learning about you. Yeah, yeah. But see, you took it over again. How did I do that? You just do it. You really uh, have to go shit? I do. I think we should take a break. Okay, I'll sing. Okay. You guys want to hear Drake songs? Pull some Drake lyrics. By the way, Drake's like a legit deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, Tom Shitting. In this time, I want to tell you to go to Netflix, watch Hey Big Boy and Ball Hog streaming right now, along with No Pain. That is Chris D'Elia's special. Now, what we did about nine months ago is the three of us realized we were all doing Netflix specials. And we decided that uh, we would write one joke between the three of us. I would tell the setup because I knew mine was coming out first. Tom was going to do the meat of the joke, which is the ultimate story, the the arc of the joke. And then Delia in his special was going to do the punchline. Uh, it was touch and go. They had to push Delia's back a couple weeks. We wanted, we initially thought it was going to be uh, me, Tom, then Delia week, week, week. And so we were like, amazed. we thought it was going to be perfect. It pushed back a little bit. So if you get the opportunity, there you go. If you get the opportunity, go three, go back and watch all three specials and see if you can find the setup, the meat of the joke, and the punchline. It's really fun. We've planned it. It's not perfect, obviously. And if you get an opportunity and you can edit them together. So even if they suck, even if you get it wrong, I think we'd enjoy it. But what you think my setup is, Tom's meat, and then Delia's punchline. It's fucking hilarious. We thought of it in the backstage of the comedy store, and we couldn't stop laughing about it. And we were fighting over who would tell the joke. And then Tom was the one that was like, why don't we just each tell a part of it Put it in our special, and then that'll be like an Easter egg, like a fun thing for fans. So see if you can find it. All I can tell you is the trifecta is complete. Was, did you get that? By the way, my mom called today, and my mom was this close. And there was a dude online on my Instagram who was like, said, is it this? And I went, you're getting warm. It's not it, but you're getting warm. So Tom shitting. We'll be right back. All oh right, back God. to you. What Was that shit aggressive? Really? Really? Yeah, I mean, I think I just I had that was too rich what I ate, and then I've just been. Wait, what did you eat? I had that breakfast oh, that wrap, breakfast burrito, and um, <laughs> the worst part is I'm so used to shitting with my washlet, you know, bidet at home. Oh yeah, that cleanup. You're, when you're not home, you feel like a monster, and it's just like it's just like spreading shit all over your ass. Yeah, and so I'm just like soaking toilet paper. Can you believe in the Middle East they just use their finger, they don't use toilet paper? Well, these fucking knuckleheads next door are from that area and they uh they cause the toilet to break. Really? Mhm. Holy shit. I like I wish that we could I I would do I would watch a whole documentary on shitting. I'd produce it. <laughs> I think we know our next project. Yeah. Like if they just said everyone shit that's what I think that's the name of a kids book. Yeah. We all shit, but we all shit in different ways. And yeah. today we're going to spend one hour talking about shitting and try to get to the base. Because I think we've learned a lot about shitting. Yeah. Like squatty potties is technically assigning Asian culture to our shitting. Well, yeah. I mean, you realize that everywhere in the world where they, we look at it, usually an American will see someone in a full squat and be like, God, you fucking savage. What are you doing? Yeah. But then you realize that's how A, your body is designed to shit. Yeah. And B, it's a much cleaner experience, you know, yeah, to be yeah. in that full squat and your your ass just spreads wide open. It just falls out of you. It's I don't know if I like I can't shit like just saddled like where your feet are touching the ground, not on a squatty potty. You th you have to have the squatty. I potty. have to have a squatty potty, or I even sometimes I'll like like if I'm in the airport, I would put my bag underneath my feet because I needed it with my feet up. I feel like my ass cheeks are spread better. Yeah, they are. And 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 then I do you ever do a squatty potty with diarrhea? I've never thought about. Oh yeah, and it. I only have diarrhea, and it just comes out like. It's like, Rrr. dude, I, I, when I shit, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like it's all built, and then I just go, Bleh! like it, and it every time, every time. I don't ever. I haven't taken like a nice long like where it crept out, you know, like yeah, like it was like hey. Dude, one time I was, I remember I just had a flashback to high school. Where I went into the stall, I, and I went to the stall, and I shut it, and I felt like, you know, when you can feel a massive, massive diarrhea. Yes. Like you can just feel the pool of water sitting there. Like I know, as soon as I pull the trigger, this is going to be just disastrous. Yeah. And I, I need to go, so I'm, a, I'm like about to go, and um, my friend 
walks in the bathroom. Like I, he's like, he, I, I think he sees my shoes or something. He's like, Segura. And I was like, oh, what's up, man? And so I go, just hold it. Because if I go right now, he's just going to turn around. Yeah. So I just like, I'm fucking like sweating, almost crying because I'm <laughs> holding it. I'm sitting on the toilet. My body's like, the fuck are you doing? Let it go. Yeah. And I was like, no, I got it. So he's like, he's taking his time. Like, he's like, oh man, he's just like talking shit about it. And I, he's got like a newspaper or something with him. And I, you know, I, you know, he drops his pants and I'm like, come on, man. I want him to get comfortable so that he's like tied to staying. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, did you see so-and-so? And he's like, mm-hmm. And I'm like, come on, man. And he drops the pants and he sits down. And he's like, ah. And then he's like settling in. I'm like, yeah, so I don't know if you heard about it. And I just let it go. <laughs> like that. And he goes, what the fuck? <laughs> and, I, and I just see him pull his pants up. And he walks out. I go, didn't you, do you have shit hanging out? He's like, nah, man, I was trying to get comfortable. It's just like, I was trying to get comfortable? Yeah, he was like going to take his time, like a casual shit, you know, like <laughs> sit for a few minutes, let it build up. But I just, I don't know. I love ruining someone's experience like that, you know. <laughs> What was the worst shit your pants story? Um, Do you want me to tell mine while you think? Because <laughs> I have a hundred of them. You have a hundred shit your pants Dude, stories? I've shit my pants so much. I've shit my pants so much. This is a joke I once tried to, I tried to slide into this last special, but it never worked. I shit my pants so often that if I'm at a green light, if I'm at a red light, it turns green and the guy behind me honks. I assume he's got to shit his pants. Does that make sense? If if a, if I'm at a red light and it turns green and I and I and I and the second it turns green and you hear the guy behind me go er, er, go yeah. motherfucker yeah I'm assuming he's about to shit his pants because uh -huh. I've done that so much really I've been in I've been like where I'm driving home to shit my pants like let's go let's go fucking come on green light I'm trying to think of the last time I shit I mean I shit my pants I shit my boxers in the uh, kitchen of our house like three houses ago because we were on that green all green. Uh, oh, smoothie stuff oh those don't count well i know but i was like waiting and i just like oh i got a fart <laughs> just water fell out of me um but i'm trying to think of like the late like the lat i shit my pants the other day on a doing an instagram story what like i like i and i almost posted it and then i was like i don't think people need to see that what happened i was just talking and i was like hey guys i don't know oh i just shit my pants i just i i'll say that a lot like i just shit my pants like i just a lot. I've shit the bed. I've done everything. You've shit the bed? I've shit the bed where I'm just laying naked and I just thought it was a fart and then I shit the bed and I'm like, not shit. Not like a full shit in the bed, but like a squirt where you're like, I got to change the sheets and never tell anyone about this. Did you? I told, I never, I never told Dan. I just changed the sheets and she'd be like, hold on. Why do we have new sheets on the bed? And you're like, oh, I don't know. Dogs. <laughs> allergies. <laughs> Worst I ever shit my pants. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say... Fifth grade, sixth grade, tennis camp. Have I told you this story? Tennis camp, sixth grade, no. I'm playing an Indian kid. I was in love with his sister. Uh, I wish I could remember. Wait, his you're name. pretending to be an Indian kid? No, I'm playing. No, I'm playing. Oh. No, I'm playing. We're playing against. a tennis match against okay. an Indian kid. He was horrible, but his sister was good, very sexy. I've always been in Indian chicks. I don't know why. And so. You can still be. Uh, and I can't because I am married to Leanne, but, yeah, but I would like to be. But well, she's part Indian. The uh, Yeah. Oh, yeah, she is. Yeah. We learned this, that. We're dancing right now. Yeah. And so uh, I've got a shit before the tennis match. And I'm like, I should probably go take a shit right now. I got to take a shit. And then as I stand up to shit, kid walks up. And he's like, are you ready? And I was like, yeah. So we go to start playing. And in our first, in our first set, I've got a shit so bad. But I'm winning. And I'm like, fuck. But I can't beat him quick enough to shit my pants to like go take a shit. So I go, all right, fuck it. I literally give up. I'm like, I'm just going to let him beat me. Like let him beat me so that I can we can break sets where we would switch and I'm just gonna go shit. take a shit real quick. Yeah. I give up. I give up. I'm like whatever. And he's like, are you even trying? I was like, I've got to go to the bathroom. And now I just dart off the thing. I'm I'm like fifth grade, sixth grade. I go to the men's locker room and as I drop my pants to go shit in the toilet, it starts coming out and it I shit half in my pants, half on the seat, none in the toilet, Ugh. and I sit in it. Oh. And there's shit everywhere, Tom. It's in my socks. It's on my. Sh it's in my wristband. It's on my tennis glove. Like yeah. it's everywhere. There's shit fucking everywhere. Oh. On my shirt, on the tail of my shirt, in my pants, in my underwear. So I'm like, fuck. So I, I don't know what to do. I'm I'm covered in sh I'm covered in shit. Like not just a little shit. I am covered in shit. So I I I get up. I leave. I take everything off. I leave it there. Shoes. I take everything off. 
I go naked into the shower and I rinse off, right? And mm -hmm. then I come back and I assess the situation. I was like, these pants aren't salvageable. The underwear's not salvageable. The shirt's not even salvageable. The only thing I can save is my tennis glove and my shoes. That's Out of all the things I have are my shoes and my tennis gloves. The socks are a fucking wash. The pants, the, everything is fucking covered in shit. So I start jiggling. I'm naked. I start jiggling lockers in the men's locker room. And one's open. And I find a pair of pants and a shirt in there. And I take them. I what? put a pair of men's pants. I don't have any clothes, man. They're covered in shit. They're covered in shit. I put a pair of men's pants on and a man's shirt. It smells like cologne. I then go back into the thing. I do the best cleanup job I can. I'm gagging like crazy. I put my shoes on. No socks. No socks. I go out and finish the tennis match. Tennis glove, man's shirt, man's pants, my shoes, no socks. I'm like a mess. I'm like really holding it together going like, I'm about to cry the Did whole time. Did he say like, he what's didn't up with the new gear? He didn't say anything. He just goes, are you ready to play? And I was like, yeah, let's play. Wait, how do you say it? He said, are you ready to play? And I said... <laughs> You get a hurt real bad, he said. <laughs> uh -huh. I get done the game. I am literally, and by the way, I'm not built for this. The guy you know right now is created based off these life experiences. Yeah. I was a softer kid then. Mm -hmm. So I am like a mess. I'm holding back tears the entire time. Dude. I'm waiting for my mom to pick me up. I don't, I'm really upset. By the way, I'm not wearing underwear. That is a big deal for me at the time because I was a hardcore tidy whities guy. Mm -hmm. I am not wearing underwear. I feel very uncomfortable. I'm a tactile guy. I have tactile issues. I'm not wearing socks. I always wear socks with shoes. Mm -hmm. I never not wear socks with shoes. Yeah. I'm in a man's clothes. I'm waiting for the guy to come out of the fucking locker room and go, did you steal my fucking clothes? I yeah. just want to get the fuck out of there. My mom pulls up. I get in the car. Finally, I'm relaxed. I start crying and she just doesn't even know. She goes, how was your day? And I'm like, I'm in a fucking outfit. I didn't show up here. Yeah. You're not going to go wear your socks or how come I think, you're. I think we got to the root of why you're a comedian today. Dude, <laughs> I have for that story. I have a hundred. I talked to my dad on this podcast the other day. I said to him, so that my, my real personality before my dad kind of tried to shake it out of me was second grade, first grade. I was on my softball, my baseball team playing second base. Fly ball hit to me. Base is loaded. I catch the fly ball, right? Yeah, it's the yeah. first like play I've ever made in my life. Everyone stands, cheers. I spike the ball, rip off my shirt, and I start dancing. Mm -hmm. I'm in first grade, and the place is going nuts. I mean, it must be really... By the way, I'm not doing it for other anything other than give the people what they want. That's where my brain is. I swear to God. I called my dad yesterday and I, because I was talking to this therapist and I was like, and they were like, what did your dad say? I go, you know, I really don't remember. I know he was a little embarrassed, but I know, I don't remember. <laughs> I go, Hey dad, what did you say? What did you think when your son in first grade ripped his shirt off and started dancing, spiked the baseball and started dancing? And he goes, I was fucking shocked. And I was like, he's like, I did not raise you like that. And I remember getting in the car with him just looking at me. He's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I just was like, it's what the people wanted. Like, I'm in yeah. first fucking grade. So I think there's a list of things like that in my life where I just was a different human being. Yeah. But wait, why did you become a comedian then? I like, what was your thing? I was thinking more. I thought my I, mom was did talking I tell about you? you the whole fucking ride in today. What about? She's like, Tom's so fucking interesting. She goes, I get you and Dalia, but like, Tom makes me laugh, but he doesn't seem like someone who cares if I laugh. <laughs> oh. I, was I don't like, know. I, I mean, I get it. You guys probably have more um, likable personalities. No, I think that I think that we're more like we're more like you can see us want you to like us. Oh, like right. you're not. You're like, like what? Why do you think you became a comedian? Um, do you have any like trauma as a kid where you're like, and then I what? Well, that's how I decided to fix it. No, I think a lot of it is that I think that they they were kind of checked out on a lot of things my folks like yeah. didn't pick up on things so i think a lot of it is like you know it became the place where you can say things and like get you know either fired up about it um make a point about something you know and actually all right all these people are paying attention i don't think they really they didn't i mean they weren't bad parents they just were like i feel like they didn't they just were kind of missed a lot of stuff you know what, what do you mean? like were your parents did your parents party with other parents no they weren't partiers they i just feel like they were more like how um how's it going and you're like good and they're like good and you're like you know they're not 
you have to volunteer something for it to like really... if you wanted attention you needed to reach out for it oh yeah 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 I like think so do you think your dad had ptsd um i think so i think a version of, i think a, we never thought he did but i looking back on it as an adult now i i, I think so yeah i think i think almost everybody does even the people that go like oh i didn't i'm like yeah i think you do and because do you think, I think it's it's too horrific a thing for a human being to experience. And do you think your mom always felt like an mm. outsider? 100%. Really? 100%. And so do you think like now like as an adult, do you think your mom was always like striving to integrate herself into American culture? Kind of. You know, with her you see like such a personality switch when she's with Latin people or speaking Spanish. Really? You yeah, t- like she we talk becomes about that. herself. We talk about like, that on our on our episode of my Netflix series. Yeah. It's it's in the show and you say your your mom is a storyteller. Like your mom is a yeah. personality, she's but really that is funny. it's only when it's her culture. Like in a weird kind way, of. It's like you, her, you can get her in English and, and like the right environment and the right day and just comfortable and she'll she'll she would entertain you if you were talking to her but like in spanish you see her really come alive the the real thing is like if you spend a lot of time with her in america and then you go with her to like a latin country you're like oh my god where is this person really yeah yeah and i think a part of it's coming over at like you know 30 33 or something wait how was your mom when she started having kids 33 yeah i think uh 33 or 34 for really? my older sister yeah and so, did you did your you ever talk to your other sisters about like your parents? Like, did they did oh, they yeah. feel like they needed to reach out and get attention? Uh, yeah, and they did through their behavior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I kept it in more, you know. But the the desire for the attention, they were more like acting out. This episode of Two Bears One Cave is brought to you by Ship Station. As folks adapt to this changing world, we're having. We're all going to buy more stuff online than we ever have before. And if you're an e-commerce seller, are you ready to meet the demands of your new delivery culture? Be ready with ShipStation. Why ShipStation? When you're selling online, getting a lot of orders out fast can be tough. How do you keep track of what you get, of what what orders you get, what shipping carrier should use? Are you getting the best rates? That's why you need ShipStation.com, the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship ship. Your orders, just orders, just a few clicks, and you'll be managing your orders, printing out labels, and getting your product out to happy customers. ShipStation uses makes it easy. We use ShipStation for my business, and my wife swears by it. They help online sellers of any size. We're very small, but we use them, and they get their orders out quick, save money on shipping costs, and keep your customers happy. No matter what you're selling on Etsy, Amazon, your own website, ShipStation brings all the orders onto one simple interface, making them super easy to manage from any device, a computer, your cell phone, a tablet, and then they work with all major carriers, USPS, FedEx, UPS, even Amazon Fulfillment, so you can compare and choose the best shipping solutions for you and your customers. They even offer the biggest discounts that the Fortune 500 companies get. So if you're using ShipStation, know that you are getting the same discounts that are usually reserved for the Fortune 500 companies, getting the best deal to you. No wonder ShipStation is the number one choice of online sellers. You ship more in less time with the best rates available. Right now, our listeners, our Two Bears, One Cave listeners, can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you use the offer code CAVE. Make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of delivery culture and get started with ShipStation.com today. Click the microphone at the top of the homepage, type in CAVE, that's ShipStation.com, and then use the offer code CAVE, ShipStation.com, Make ship happen. This episode of Two Bears is brought to you by Policy Genius. We're always going to get things wrong. Like deciding whether or not you got to take a dump before a podcast starts. Good point. (laughs) Um, But there are some things we can get right (laughs) on the first try, like shopping for home insurance. That's where Policy Genius comes in. First, head to policygenius.com, answer a few quick, quick questions about yourself and your property. If Policy Genius finds you a better rate than what you're currently paying, they'll do all the work to get you switched. You don't have to worry about, oh my God, I got to call them and log in and send these files. They'll take care of it for you. If you own a car, Policy Genius will compare your home and auto policies across different insurers and even mix and match to find your savings. So even if you look back on your triple denim days in distress, you'll never be distressed about home insurance with Policy Genius. In just a few minutes, you can find your best price and apply at policygenius.com. We get things wrong from time to time. At least we can get home insurance right 
with Policy Genius. So why why do you why do you like what is it about? Do you, when was the last time you lost control? Lost control? Like where? Because you are one of my most measured friends. I mean, like lost my temper? No, just lost control. Where you were like, no, not not even temper, but just you're like, fuck it, spring break. Ah. Oh, I do the I do the thing. I think it's still about once a year where I drink way too much. And I, I've never even been there. No, you've never been there for it. Why wouldn't you do that with me? I don't know. I mean, we can. That's like one of my favorite things. I think it's because it's not <laughs> planned. It's not planned. That's when, why. When, do you, when was the last time you got dr- way too drunk? I can't remember. I can't remember off the top of my head. I just know that what will happen is this. Like now, usually if I'm drinking... It's not that much. And if I go, you know, I feel like there's been weeks like on the ro- on the last tour, there had to have been a night where the shows are over for the week and it's been week after week and you start with booze, right? That's yeah. the only danger for me because like beers, I'm like, whatever, wine, you know, it's fine. Yeah. But like if I'm drinking uh, bourbon and usually like after a certain number, a couple, you're like, oh, I feel it and I have to get up for this flight or whatever. Mm-hmm. But there's been a couple times where I'm like, yeah, fuck it. And like, yeah, it's all, it, I always end up feeling like dog shit, blacking out part of the night. Blacking out? Yeah. And do you just talk shit? I've never seen this. Let's schedule a time. I am. We, let's, let's do a, let's I'm do. I'm very fearful of what my blackout. Cause like, I remember like one time spring break, I was with Chuck and we went to like Myrtle Beach and we got Everclear and Gatorade, you know? <laughs> And I blacked out at like 11 and we were out till four. So I woke up the next day and I was just like, (laughs) like, you know, just like the panic. (laughs) Got to kill a man. Yeah. I did it. I did it. I did it here also in LA at like 23. Yeah. Where dude, I, I I also woke up and I was like, what the fuck? Can we do, can we do a web? Like, like we do the web series, like, can we do one webisode of you getting blackout drunk? It's not going to be good. Why? I'll get blackout drunk with you. You don't get blackout drunk. I, I gray out. We would have to fucking get an IV of booze into you. Do, when, I, I would probably need to do something a little more. No, I just have, You could do it rectally because that could cause alcohol poisoning. We could do that. I haven't. I haven't. I'm probably a super lightweight right now. I haven't drank in 30 days. 20, but. 25 days yeah technically it's, it's really probably 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 oh you'll like this one what i because i so i'm working in, i'm working in uh in for, i'm an intern at uh copelson entertainment and i'm going out with some of the staff there i just started doing stand-up and uh, i don't bring them to a show but we're all hanging out we're going to a couple bars and we end up at miyagi's on sunset I know Miyagi's. Yeah. How do I know Miyagi's? It was across the street from Dublin's. Oh, yeah. I remember Miyagi's. So we're, we're there with a group of people, and I, I'm a, I'm a few deep. I'm like booze and tequila and shit, and I'm holding court oh. and talking shit. People That's are so laughing. not you, though. I know. And I'm talking shit. People are laughing. And I got this. I got vague memories of it, but someone else had to tell me. They're like, so we're all sitting around, and you're talking and then in the middle, he's like, you're notably drunk. You just puke like in front of everybody, like just stand there and you like projectile vomit. And then, you know, like when you're, when you're done puking, you spit like you, you know, the, yeah. he's like, you're done puking, you spit and like kind of clear it. And then you kind of sit, stand back up and you keep telling your story to everybody. Everyone was like, whoa. And so I, <laughs> I go into work on Monday. That was Saturday night. I go into work on Monday and like five of the people that I work with were there. And I, I'm like, hey, what's up? Like, good to see you guys. And they're like, good Wait, to see you. What in the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How come that, why, how do you, like, I, that, would, I, that would scare me if I knew that I could get there and I wouldn't remember it. Like, I, I would be like, I got to measure my alcohol. I well, guess. yeah, I mean, like, it's not the reason I don't drink that much. I just, you know, the older I've gotten, usually if I have a, a few drinks, I'm talking like of real drinks, 
Yeah. And not anywhere close to drunk. I'll wake up the next day and be like, fuck, man, I don't feel like I can do anything today. So I, to I me, feel, it's just I feel not. Like, I feel like, I see, I was in the shower and I was trying to defend me drinking with Joe as a day not drinking. Mm-hmm. And the reason I can defend it is that I didn't cut loose. Like I had oh. two drinks, yeah. which is what a regular person does. But I got to be honest with you. I felt like the whole time I was just in the starters box. Like I was just down in the starters box looking at the race going, when are we going to let go of this? And that's the problem I have is that I want to, like, I don't want to be in the starters box. Like if we go to, if we go to have dinner and you all have a glass of wine, that's starter blocks. Like oh. I want to race. I want to run. I'm a fucking stallion. I want to fucking I want to feel free. I don't want to drive. Like I could never. The reason I don't drink and drive is because I don't want to. I don't want to measure my alcohol and go. Uh, actually, I got to stop. I got to drive. I need an hour to not. Like I just go. No, no. I just take an Uber and then let's fucking cut loose. Yeah, yeah. Your brain's different. My brain's really different. I like to run. I. I'm like a dolphin. If you think about it, I'm really, I'm truly like a dolphin. I'm probably have more. If I think about it, you really are truly like a dolphin. A hundred percent. Which is, why is that? Is that I'm beautiful to watch. Like, I'm just pure joy. I like to get in front of boats. I like to jump out of the water. I like to do flips. Not a lot of points to, like, what I do. You you, you could probably argue, like, is any of this, like, purposeful? Like, what is the point of this? Mm -hmm. But it's beautiful. (laughs) You'll like this one. You can ask Chuck this one. This is a scarier one. Is he still in L.A.? Yeah. Yeah. So when we went to Myrtle Beach, uh, it was like junior year. I want I no, want, I want earlier. I want you to slow the story down. Yeah. I want to know what car you drove in. I want to know what you were wearing. Were okay. you wearing were you wearing the the Nike slides with uh with gym shorts and a cut off uh Miami Dolphins sleeveless shirt that you would cut the sleeves off yourself? No, it's probably like a button down like Stussy. Uh what? Yeah, and then jeans and like i don't know maybe boat shoes or something i think it's freshman or sophomore year oh, at college. So you like dressed up you didn't go to the beach to like um to like look like see i'm in that ba- different in, year different years of college i dress differently i have like, a vision of you dressed as like an offensive lineman like 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 sleeve like the sleeves cut off your shirt cut down to here uh, chuck's got his shirt off with a with a uh with a <laughs> with a uh a, a straw fedora with Beer cap all around the edge with a python around his neck. Like, <laughs> now we're in his we're in his ninety five Mustang GT. Um, he drove. I remember that. I remember we were we didn't have a hotel and we we're driving around a residential neighborhood and we got pulled over and like we have weed and booze and everything. We're underage <laughs> and we got out of that and then we went to the beach and slept on the beach and then the cops kicked us out of there <laughs> and then we got a hotel and then. We did that Everclear Gatorade thing. Yeah. And I completely blacked out. And then the next morning, he, I was like, something happened last night. He was like, dude. <laughs> Wait, what did he say? What did you do? Well, I'm, which is, Chuck is 6'5. And uh, he was, at the time, he was probably 265, a like, big dude. Yeah. He's like, you're lucky I was with you. Because I, I guess I was like, just, you know, super fucked up. We went to some club and I was like, you know what we should do, man? You should like grab a girl's ass and then kick the dude that she's with. <laughs> Wait, is there a nickname for this guy? Does this, 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 so this, he this was, isn't 10 milligrams homie. No, no, no. So he was like, he thought it was, he was like, oh, it's hilarious. And he's like, but then you started doing it. So then like a girl would come by and you grab her ass and you kick the guy. And then they were like, what the fuck are you doing? And uh, I was like, what? And he told me that he was like, yeah, man. So a couple guys definitely wanted to fuck you up. Shut up. Um, yeah. What was your nickname for that guy when he'd show up? For this guy? Yeah, but like, did you have a character that no, like, I didn't Tom Tom just no, showed up? No, no, T-Buns, I guess. T-Bun. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It was like, um, but I don't, I don't know. I just never wanted to get like that fucked up again. Oh, I love when I get that fucked up. Really? Yeah, I love when I lo- I'm super. One I- of my favorite things in the world in college was being like, like uh, waking up and being like, how did I get home last night? I will say this. You're a really good drunk. That's a horrible feeling. Um, <laughs> I'm actually, not, as bad as that sounds, I'm actually like a really lovable. I, I tell people like all positive shit when I'm drunk. See, I would, I want to see the one. I want to see you dangerous. Like when you're like, let's kick that guy in the leg. and Because that would make me laugh hard as fuck. Can we get security? 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be a fun one. We should hire like oh, Navy SEALs my God. and then just go around and I'll be like, what's up, bitch? Like all drunk and see what, what happens. That is a brilliant idea. You want to videotape that it? That is too? a brilliant. What we need to do. Well, we, we should call it, uh, let's hang on. Let's think of the right term, but it's, it's like when you're a diplomat. Oh yeah. Diplomatically drunk and where mm -hmm. you can't get in trouble because you have diplomatic immunity, diplomatic immunity. Yep. And, you, and we have like nine cage fighters around us <laughs> and, and we're just, and we get to, we get to go up to guys bigger than us and just test them a little bit. And then the cage fighters will be like, Hey man, calm the fuck down. And he's like, <laughs> Oh my God! He's Uri like, I'm Uriah just... Faber. I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> such a big fan. I, are you, you know this guy? And he's like, yeah, we're getting paid pretty heavily to make sure that he didn't get killed tonight. It's pretty funny too, to talk shit to somebody who's like, hey, I'm just trying to have a good night. And I'm like, well, you fucked up coming here tonight. So, hey man, are you gonna stand up and be that sit there like a bitch? And he's like, what's your swishy ass <laughs> looking at right now? He's like, the Diaz brothers are staring pretty aggressive at me, and yeah. we're like. Nate, go up and smack him. He's like, I'm not touching him, Bert. This is all you tonight. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. And just go up and be like, I'm putting my fingers in your mouth, motherfucker. Yeah. And he's like, ah, 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 ah. It could turn. It would be so much fun. Yeah. If you could do that for bachelor parties, like you'd be like, hey, man, we got you a bachelor party. You're like, do you get strippers? You're like, no, we got cage fighters. And you're like, what? And like, you get to take these cage fighters out with you tonight. We're not getting in any trouble. They're yeah. going to squash it all before it starts. Yeah. It'd be perfect, man. They'll. Basically, you can provoke somebody into fighting, but then the fight will never happen. But it'll never happen because the guy's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I didn't know it was Boss Rutten. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and Boss is like, hey, man, just sit down, okay? Yeah. yeah. Is that a good Boss? Boss Rutten probably has one story that I think over and over and Do over you ever again. Watch that, um, the clips of his open handed slap. It's mm. the fucking. No. He did this thing where I would love when to see he was it. kickboxing he would do an open palm slap to like your ear and it wasn't forbidden and it would just distort and hurt them enough that then that his next move they were never really prepared for. And he would just devastate them with this. Oh, you can probably pull it up. Boss rooting his open hand slap. It's fucking, Oh my God. It looks like the worst. Th and then he obviously kicks so fucking hard, man. Backhands, Frank Shamrock. God, man. You know, it's. I wonder if. Do you think that Cage Fight. By the way, I'm the last person that should be talking about anything MMA. Pancreas? Right. See, no closed fist to the head in this thing, but he's. You can do palm strikes and slaps, and he's just. He's mastered it, man. Does it seem like back in the day, like during this time, that like these guys just. Oh, my God. Is that Frank Shamrock? Yeah, it is. It's a young Frank Shamrock. Yeah. God, man, he's got a great fucking body. Whoa. Yeah, he just got like the... Uh... But if you get his open his open palm strikes... Boss Rutten is a fucking savage, dude. Yeah. The way, You know, I, I got to tell you the way I love him telling stories. The mm. way he tells a story is so matter of fact. Who, Boss? Boss Rutten. Every time he tells a story, he goes like, did did you ever hear the story about the time the guy that got got the cue ball stuck in his mouth? The time he got a cue ball? They bet a fucking dude he couldn't get a cue ball in his mouth. He did? <laughs> Boz Rutten bet a guy that he couldn't get a cue ball in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Knowing full well you can get it in, you just can't get it out. And he's like, yeah. And then we had to break some of his teeth out and get the cue ball out. You know, it's really hard to get a cue ball out. Like the way he says it. So like if you told me you're going to have to break my teeth out to get a cue ball, I'd be like, huh? Oh, no, no, no. And he's like, nope. Now we're going to break some of the teeth out because that's the only way to get a tooth out. You would be the guy to have a cue ball stuck in your mouth. Just, oh, and I have to explain it to your wife. He said he could do it. And then they shoved it in there. And then what's it? We got, okay, we're going to do the palm strike here. What is this? I don't know. So, okay, who, like... This is going to be a lot of him teaching it. Does, do you think, do you think... You don't have, like, some compilation of him doing it? Not to, like, not to, like, trash talk current MMA fighters. Yeah. Because there's a lot of great ones now. But don't you think there was, like, something a little more heroic about that first round of cage fighters, like the Tank Abbots and the Frank Shamrocks? Well, it was the, more brutal. Is that it was, what it is? Yeah, it was more. It was, there was like, less it was rules. Like, it was almost like there was only like five pillars of 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 like hoist Gracie, 
Like though it seemed like there was only a few of them. Now it seems like it rotates so quickly that guys come in and out of the system. Well, don't so you remember quickly. though those early days though? They would like it would just be just covered in blood, and they would just be rolling around in blood. And there was <laughs> I do remember there those. was like I think they were like striking to the back of the head, and they were just like let it happen. I mean that was it's amazing how much we knew about MMA without knowing anything about MMA, only because we had the chip in our box. So we could watch pay-per-view anytime we wanted in college. Uh -huh. And we would just watch. I mean, that would be our pre-party of going out Friday, Saturday night. Really? Was you just watch all the fights on repeat on the chip. And we just sit there. And I remember the first time I heard you about You were watching Ho that in college? In college, yeah. Really? I remember watching Hoist Gracie in college. Had to be 1996, 97. Um, I, but I, I think it, I remember watching Hoist Gracie and being blown away that a little guy could take a big guy. Like being, that was like mind changing. I remember we watching those fights and then going out to the bars and just being so fucking physically aggressive because we had watched so many of those fights. You know what that's called? Priming. Is that, that happened what it to is? me one time where I watched a bunch of fights and I was at a job and I, would, and I just kept watching fight, fight, fight. And then they were just like, hey, you know, guests aren't supposed to be on the eighth floor of this building. And then someone was like, there's someone on the eighth. And I was like, I'm going to go talk to him right now. And I got up and I just started barking in this dude's face. And he was like, what the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> told me to calm down. And I was like, no. And, and it was all from watching, just getting those in my head. Like, ready to fucking throw down. <laughs> Dude, I remember Gosh. getting afraid. Like, I want to say like, that there was. A... Is that one? Open what? hand strike? Or is that somebody else? That's someone else. Oh, no. but look at that fucking monster. Who's yeah, that who guy? Yeah, who is that? Jesus Christ, man. Is that this real? This doesn't look like a real person. No, this is like this is like WWE shit. Right? No, no, this is... Oh, yeah, this has got to be WWE. No, he's no? kicking hard. Oh, yeah. I don't know. This looks ridiculous. Oh, oh. my God. Who... That's... That this doesn't is, look real. This that's is pro wrestling. Yeah, that's wrestling. <laughs> We're both like two fucking country bumpkins in the back of a garage watching pro wrestling going now. Now that looks real. No, that looks that 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 looks like bullshit. All right. How long do you think it would take us to kill Boss Rutten in a hotel room if he was passed out? If he was passed out? Like but just drunk, right? So like he's had a lot to drink and he's sleeping in a bed and we that's our jump start. The mission is kill him? We need to kill him. And so like but we can't like Here's the key, right? Okay. Everything, it's a cheap hotel room, mm -hmm. so everything's glued to everything. So you can't lift the thing. You got to, me and you, with our bare hands, got to try to kill a, just, a, just a sleeping boss rootin'. Wait, is he just sleeping or is he's, he... He's been drinking. How so he's much? passed out. He's, like, he's pretty wasted. I mean, we just have to try to suffocate him, I guess. You think... You, oh, hold on one second. Yeah. Okay. So you think very quietly you'd go... Yeah, I, I feel like... I mean, can we pick the phone up or no? You can't pick the phone up. What about the dresser? Good. If, yeah, me and you can lift the dresser. Okay, like, so I would be like, let's pick up the dresser. Go over his head. Throw it down on his head. Kick the dresser off and then I'll hold it down with a pillow. And then all of a sudden, me and you are lifting up the dresser. He wakes up and we're like, hi, sir, we're just taking the dresser out. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what's he doing? I'm like, this, this, we got new dressers trying to switch it out now i'm amazed at like the type of men that are out there what do you mean like the type of men that are out there like the type like just the type of men i would love to f see you fight boss rootin think about let's 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 categorize men are you ready okay let's let's start with physical men there are men out there Gaddafi. what no there are men out there that their safety is not paramount what do you mean? Their like, safety is not like parent. like for me and you. Our safety is number one. Like we're not going to do stuff. Like if I said, "Hey man, uh, let's go out and surf these big waves, and we'll do toe in surfing. Let's see if we can do it." You'd be like, "I'm not going to do that. Right, I'm not I'll even going to. Yeah, I'm not going. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to die." But there are people that go, "Oh no, let me get a shot of that." Yeah, like Laird yeah. Hamilton goes, "I'm in," and then uh, yeah, I mean, dude, I saw him paddleboard into Tiapu. Tiapu is like the biggest, thickest wave in the world. People have a hard time just surfing into it. A lot of people tow into it. He paddleboarded into it like a paddleboard 
and then surfed it. Dude, type in Laird Hamilton paddleboard Tiapu. It's T A T. That's the not the way you spell Tiapu. That's a fucking Thai hooker pronunciation. All right, it's, let's see. I want to see how he searches. It makes me so angry. Tia, that's Aunt Poo. Just so you know, you wrote Tia okay. Poo. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Erase that whole thing. Got Laird Hamilton. L A I. No, no, no. Let him try to guess how to spell Laird. God. It makes me so angry. Laird Hamilton. Yeah. Okay. Not biggest wave. That's they're gonna get a lot. Oh, that's that so for the record, I can tell you the wave right now. That wave on the far right is Tiapu. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I didn't even see that it says Tiapu. That is Tiapu. But type in Laird Hamilton paddleboards Tiapu. See, that's how you spell Tiapu. It's T E A. There, it just was at the bottom. Look at this. Sorry, guys. So go to video. Videos. Stand up paddleboarding Tiapu. Now, these are fucking dudes that are... Look how thick this fucking wave, are, wave is. I've watched this video maybe a hundred times. This one? This I've watched this video because... So I, where is where in Hawaii is this? This is not Hawaii. This is... Oh, uh, uh, this is... Tahiti. Oh, this is like okay, like and, South Pacific. Yeah, like, and this is the thickest wave. Look what how. What does that mean? The thickest wave. Wait, you'll see how thick this wave is. So look at this guy just go. So take a look when it get. You see the sideways. Just look at how. God. Like, you see that wave's not like a. It's Whoa. just a. It's a fucking mound of water pouring onto people. God, that looks fun. I could never. I, there's not a part of me that could ever do that. Like I just. I, my. I would what do be you like, mean? Like I would never. Just the idea of like standing up, like being able to stand up that quickly. I can't stand up that quickly. Like that's the yeah. hardest part about surfing is getting from on your body. Have you surfed before? Yeah, but not not like the real surfing. But I mean, don't you think that's just your inexperience though? Yeah, but look at this fucking guy. Do you think you're willing to risk that? No, no, I'm not willing to risk any of this. But yeah, I'm by the way, saying... that that is even scary. At like like a five foot wave is terrifying to get thrown off of. Where's uh, Laird in all this? Okay, video? watch this. He's just gonna come in on a paddleboard. On a paddleboard, dude. That is un. Look at all these guys are trying to paddle sur like surf regular into it because you got to like be able to get going. Fast forward to it to Laird. You'll see. Are you? Do you ever think of how fascinating it'll be? Like on a pure, purely genetic study thing. To look at him. Look at him. Look at him. On a fucking paddleboard. Look how look at him going, come on, get get the fuck, go, go. Dude, that guy's a different cut of human. Yeah, for sure he is. Like I look at that and I he go He also will jump out of a helicopter onto a wave. Yeah, like I like there's I, I look at all the different types of men and I go, I, I there's a lot of men I couldn't relate to, and then they go, Well, stand up's one of the most scary things in the world, and you're like, Not at all. Well like I would much but rather that, that is you know, someone's perspective for sure. Subjectively they go there's nothing more terrifying than standing in front of a few thousand people alone. That is for some people. Yeah. But have you ever thought about what, I mean, again, just scientifically studying the fact that he and Gabby Reese have kids, like <clears throat> that they're both these like specimens, athletes, super athletes. I mean, amazing. Like what their kids must, I mean, I know they have multiple kids, but like when their kids become adults, I bet they're all just going to be, Freaks, basically, right? Like yeah, physical no, what's freaks. Crazy. I just talked to Gabby Reese the other day. You did? Yeah, yeah. By the way, as a Florida State kid, uh -huh. it was like one, like a highlight. Like I yeah. was like, I was so fucking excited. I want to know what her seat freshman year was like, like where she lived, like all this, yeah. all the weird stuff about going to Florida State. You know what they've done, which I am not good at. Which, mm. as a parent, you go, I'm not really good at. They didn't pressure their kids into anything. They wanted their kids to find their own way. Yeah, that's great. Because that's who they were. Their parents didn't pressure them. Yeah. And I was like, I would not be. Like, if I had kids that had the, the fucking genetics of Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese, I'd be like, uh, we're up at six in the morning and we are doing burpees. Starting now, like, we are getting fucking ripped. I'm, they probably already naturally are. I think they're, I think their kids, you know, Gabby, Gabby Reese, which is interesting to me, didn't get into volleyball until like, her senior year of high school. Really? Like she didn't, and she didn't, wasn't, she was like, I wasn't even really that good. I was just tall. Yeah. She was like, and I kind of didn't, like I wasn't really passionate about it until I got into it. And then I was like, oh, okay, I can get into it. Dude, she's a really fascinating person. What did you guys, podcast? Podcast uh, on Burtcast. We did a um, uh, Zoom, con got, it, 
Why do I stutter? What was that? Why sentence? do I stutter when what I talk to you? What was that sentence? She and I've watched so many videos of her and fucking Laird. Yeah, and of her and Laird, but Jesus is coming out wrong. But they do this. They do this sauna. I'm doing this sauna today, where it's an extended sauna mm-hmm. at like 1:35. You do it for an hour, and she. They do this sauna polar, polar plunge, which I do a version of, and then she's like, "You should come over and do it." And I was like, "Oh, I'd love to." And I was so intimidated until I realized I will just bring my best buddy, Tommy. Where do they live, though? In Malibu. They have a house in Malibu. Oh, I thought they lived in Hawaii. They have a house in Malibu in Hawaii, too. Oh. So me and you go. We do some underwater. Go, go. Like kettlebell runs on the bottom. Kettlebell Mm -hmm. run on the bottom. Yeah. Get in the sauna for like at 220 with Laird on a a fucking with some oven mitts and one of these rowing things. We bring Joe. We should bring Joe. And then and then we'll get ice plunge. I love when your sauna. F- fantasies just kind of run, and you're like, and then this guy will come, and <laughs> yeah, like yeah. none of that's gonna happen. Hardcore workout. Me and you need to hardcore workout with Laird. That's yeah, that would be a fun day. And then we'll we'll video it and we'll put it. Did online. you have a crush on Gabby? Everyone did. Everyone. Yeah. I worked with her. She didn't remember it. You did. I did a pilot with her. Yeah. When? Uh, probably like probably like five years ago. Five years ago, she doesn't remember it. No, she. I was like, "Do you remember where we went?" She met? She's like, "Is this a trick question?" I was like, "No." I said, "We did a pilot for Loveline." She was like, "Oh my god!" Or, yeah, I want, I want to say it was Loveline. Uh, maybe it was the Man Show. You don't even remember the fucking thing. I don't really remember the thing. Anyway, but I said she told me about. It was the first time I ever heard about kombucha. I said, "Do you party?" And she goes, "No, but I'll have a kombucha every now and then." And I was like, "I'd never heard of kombucha." And I go, "What's kombucha?" And she goes, "There's alcohol in it." And I went, "Oh, cool." And so the next night, I bought like a six pack of kombucha. You and started just, drinking it, and I was like, I can't catch a buzz from this shit. Like, I got to drink it faster. You know, like when you're just slow rolling it. Please tell me you're kidding. I swear to God. And and what's even funnier is I said to the lady when I checked out of Gelson's, I said, "There's alcohol in there," and she goes, "Yeah, technically we're supposed to ID you." And I was like, I thought she was saying it because I was older. Like I looked. I was uh-huh. like, technically, I got to ID you. I know you're 20. One, yeah, but she was saying technically because there's such a minuscule amount yeah. that they technically You're need like, the I've idea. had twenty of these. <laughs> I had I at least four, much. and I didn't feel anything. By the way, I've had the ones with straight up alcohol in it, where yeah. they say it's a beer, and I don't feel those. Yeah, but I it's enjoy- a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you feel it? Do you feel I it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't drink them. Who? Let's get fucked up today and go just harass people. Okay. You know what we could do? Get get some like some booze into me, and we'll just go harass people without masks on. We'll just scream at them from the car. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll get an Uber driver. We'll be like, look, we're gonna verbally assault some people. You just be cool. Here's an extra hundred. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Hey, fuckhead, trying to get AIDS? We just keep driving. <laughs> Put a mask on. We'll just do that shit. I like that idea. I would love. I, I'm curious of when I'll start drinking again. Mm, what is your guess? Um. I want to do a big Zoom party call. They said they can do a Zoom with 3,000 people. And I was like, I would love to do that and do like a happy hour with 3,000 people. We're talking about, we got to have an end of quarantine party. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, when do you want to do it? When the quarantine. Wait, wait, are you inviting me or are you telling me? Of course you're invited. Okay. Like at your, are you talking about like, what do you, maybe I should, I got into this way too quick. (laughs) What are you thinking when you say end of quarantine party? I'm thinking of like throwing a party to at, celebrate at your house. Things. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, D- yeah, and then like, but I mean, we're, we'll really tie one on, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm get really some in. little people there. Get some like Brad Williams, other dwarves, <laughs> little people there. Some of your favorite <laughs> seven favorites. <laughs> so wait, when do you want to do this? We, I mean, there. I mean, Gavin Newsom, by the way, who will be our president one day, mm-hmm. is uh. Oh, oh, boy, am I getting a lot of texts. About what? Uh, just everything. Steve Hofstever hit me, hit, hit me up. Um, the So wait, get, when do they say we're going to be out of quarantine? They say that they're going to lock out stay at home is ending in May. May 15th is the current, but that's a month away. We don't know what's going to happen. In the Dude, if month. I don't drink for another month, my liver is back to, it's my manager. My, man, my, my liver is back to normal. <laughs> yep says dr drew okay kind of kind of said that <laughs> he said he well, he said it starts rejuvenating itself let me see call dr drew and yeah. see when see when my liver gets back to normal let's get this 60 days oh shit i have a conference call at noon 
Oh, that's 30 minutes away. You're good. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Tell him I'm 30 days sober. Okay. So, um, by the way, we lost a thousand people. Yeah, buddy. Hey, buddy. Um, I'm recording this call. This is uh, Two Bears, One Cave. I'm with Bert Kreischer right now. Um, Who? Bert, Who are you with? Uh, uh, big guy, drinks a lot. Hey, big boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he is between 20 and 30 days sober, I'm right? 30, one month, 52 minutes, and 27 seconds sober. He's sober for a month now. I know just by the timing, he's very serious about it. Very. He's got, a, he's got an app. He said he understands why AA works. I do understand, Drew. Literally last night at 30 days, we lost 1,000 people that all stopped drinking on the same day. 1,000 people started drinking last night. Hmm. I know, Ooh. right? Yeah. But, he, but here's the deal. Even though Bert now understands how AA works, he has no intention of doing it. No, no, yeah, no, not doing it. No, no, no. Okay. He he has absolutely no intention of doing it. But actually, we're okay. trying to okay. figure out when I can start drinking again. Yeah, he's trying to he's trying to plan when to start drinking again. Um, I told him that you know they extended the stay at home in LA till May fifteenth, and um, he's like, if I can go till May fifteenth, another month, my liver will be completely back to normal. And I was like, okay. Well, we we can't know that without doing some testing. Okay. Because he may have fibrosis. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Hang up on him. Hang up on him. I don't fucking want to hear this. I'm not you have it. I'm, you're, you, you, you're right that if you just had fatty liver, it should be pretty good at about two months. There you go. That yeah. That is true. Yeah. That's if you have just fatty liver. But yeah, I do. But you may I have do. some fibrosis in there or something as well, which is not which, so good. Which means what? Which means what? Which means the liver started to scar. You know, that's what happens after the, <laughs> the inflammation from fatty liver. And that is sort of an irreversible process. Okay, then, uh, and then, and then, and then so why what? the fuck does anyone call you? You are like, you are like Johnny Bad News. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the point is like, maybe he should just extend that sobriety period for a little longer. Well, if I got fibrosis... Then I might as well just fucking start drinking again, right, Drew? No, wrong because that, because it, it can be very very slow unless you drink. Then it can be very very fast. Oh, great! So so you we... can be, you'd be fine a lifetime with a little fibrosis. Okay, what about this? What about this? He stomach. feels regular pain in his kidney areas. Is that something to think about? Stop! No? Stop! Stop! I don't even want to know what that sounds like, Drew. I have yeah. never had elevated enzymes in my life. Oh no, my I, liver! Yeah, that's not a, that's not a great way to assess the liver. It just it, it's it's if they're high, they tell you something. If they're low, they don't necessarily say anything. So uh, I, you need like an ultrasound of your liver to know for sure what's going on. What about uh, MRI or uh, uh, CAT scan of his yeah. brain just to see like what kind of you know frontal lobe how damage? Much, how much breakage was then? Yeah, an MRI would tell us a lot. All right, we'll just how schedule much? an MRI and. Hey, uh, guess Drew. who just got uninvited to the party, Drew? <laughs> but but here's the deal. He, listen, Bert just told me a couple days ago that it's easy for him now because with the lockdown, there's no fear of missing out. Yeah, so yeah. it's easier for him. So just take advantage of the, the extended lockdown. Yeah, there I got go. it. But we're talking about throwing a party, which is my FOMO, which I want to drink at. Yeah. You're going to have a party while there's a lock quarantine? No, no, no. At the end of quarantine. Uh, uh, yeah, but the party, gatherings, you're, you're not going to be allowed more than 10 people for a while. It's okay. me and Tom. All right. Um, we're thinking of getting a couple, you know. Let's just uh, think about any other ways we can bump her down. How, what else can we do to bump him out? <laughs> Tell me touring doesn't start again until fall 21. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, there, there will be. I, I Look, there, there's a possibility of things getting better quick in the summer. Possible. So we'll see. Give us we'll see good news. Happens. Give us good news oh, yeah, about our, our what's, curve flattening. What's good news? So, so good news. Good news is, you know, that in California we're doing amazing. We've suppressed this thing like crazy. Therapeutics are really looking very encouraging. I, my peers are getting lots of interesting improvisations under their belt where they are learning new ways to attack this thing that are really working. It's a se It might be a seasonal virus. It might go away during the summer. Uh, vaccines are accelerating. I'm, I'm listening to a lecture on the vaccine right now to try to, try to figure out how fast it could come. And... Um, and, you know, then the way out is with the social distancing and the masks and the hand washing, all that stuff. And that might be very, very, very effective. That's cool. And is it true that? that Persians need to worry more than anybody else? Who? Persians? I'm trying to, I'm following, but I'm not getting it. Oh, I've just thought, are they more prone to, just, to getting it or no? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Aware. All right. Just checking. Just, just checking. I'm just feathering it. Just feather it here. Just feather it, brother. All right. Yeah. Well, all right. uh,. 
Thank you for the intel. We're yeah, gonna thanks for the good mood. We're going to try to heal Bert soon. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Drew. Hey, Drew, 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 Drew. What can I take to heal my liver quicker? Uh, nothing. Fluids and exercise. Well, you know, exercise is going to be just the blood flow through it with exercise is a good idea. That will help. There you go. And uh, otherwise, uh, I can't think of any all that nonsense about milk, milk thistle, thistle and all that stuff. really doesn't do anything. Just kind of... I'm just, you know, sometimes there's something called NAD that I'll, I'll look into a little bit for you that maybe, 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 uh, but just don't drink. That's the main thing. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Right. Awesome. Okay. So Thanks, Drew. To you. Appreciate it. One time. I, that is a fun way to end an episode. One time I walked into a GNC and mm-hmm. I said to the guy, I said, yeah, I'm looking for something to kind of like help uh, heal my liver. And the guy looked at me, he's an Indian guy, and he goes, you need to quit drinking, man. And I went, I'm sorry. And I was like, I, I, how do you know that I drink? And he goes, why do you come into GNC and ask? I need to hear liver. You need to quit drinking, man. That's all. And I went, wait, hold on. You don't have just like a vitamin? He goes, quit drinking. And just went back to the desk. And I went, I told him, I said, you're going to get a hurt a real bad. <laughs> Am I doing it right? It's close. <laughs> uh, that hat is fire. It's not out yet. People, it's not out yet. I've never been asked more. Oh, something. Leanne's going crazy. She's like, all I get are fucking emails about that goddamn hat. It's going to be uh, May is what we know for sure now. Yeah. And it's going to, I think we should actually get together and do like an IG live to announce that it's in, because it's going to go immediately. Okay. So we should do something like social media. Let's do an Instagram live. Have you been doing a lot of Instagram yeah, lives? Yeah, a few, yeah. With celebrities? No. I did one with David Arquette the other day. Yeah, fun. It's pretty fun. He goes, he's like, yeah, man. I go, you drinking? And he goes, no nah, man, I'm fucking sober. And I said, "Oh, nice." I go, "How how long?" And he goes, "Well, like two days." But you know, I was like, "Oh, that's why I love David Arquette." Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, yeah, we should do an Instagram live, and then we should. You want to do a Zoom meeting with three three thousand people? I'll let you handle that. And then we're gonna have a party at your house. I think so. On May, let's just see how this develops. But yeah, plan on it. And then what is? I'm like, I'm in really great shape right now. I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. I'm trying to get herd healthy. That's my new thing. Herd healthy? Yeah, because that's what they're talking about. Herd humi- immunity mm-hmm. is that they're going to, at one point, they're just going to be like, all right, fuck it. Let's start life up, back up again. And we're just going to thin out the herd. That's <laughs> that's what the, that's cool. what the, I mean, type in herd immunity real quick because that's like the big thing they're talking about now is going, fuck it. You just Jesus, go back it's into just society. H-E-R-D. Oh my God. Christ. Yeah, Amber herd humanity, <laughs> immunity. Herd immunity, the resistance to spread of contagious disease with a suddenly high proportion of individuals immune to disease, especially through vaccination. But what they're talking about is just opening up things again and just saying, "Who dies? Fuck it, go out." And it's let's just roll the dice that young people don't die like crazy. By the way, I'm paraphrasing. I'm not certain that's what that's me barely listening to. Yeah, because it doesn't really say that there, but <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. But uh, I, but I, uh, by the way, I just want to point out that I listened to amazing. No, <laughs> that we barely got to know me. Hold on. I you listened. stopped at fucking third grade. I'm going to start the clock. I'm going to tell you a one minute story. If I can do a one minute story on Tom, that means I've listened. Okay. okay. Ready, set, go. Tom Segura was born to Forrest Gump and Frida. <laughs> they were, they lived very early in Cincinnati where he was born and then he moved to Minnesota where he found his love of football and started going to football camps which such stars as Chris Collinsworth and God, fuck that up Rich Gannon uh, Tom then moved down to Florida where Not he yet. met uh, no. he, he missed the move he missed you moved back to Cincinnati nope you moved to Indiana Milwaukee in Milwaukee yeah Milwaukee Milwaukee was next what the fuck did you do in Milwaukee I was a fucking kid I went to school <laughs> And then he moved down to a very multicultural group of friends. Uh, three black dudes, two Indians, an Asian, and they were called the Mathletes. <laughs> and then him and Charlie went to South Carolina and yeah. partied in an IROC and slept on the beach. Tom kicked a dude in the leg, smacked his chick in the ass, and that's where we met. Uh, what was the name of the drinking Tom? Tom Tommy, uh, two, two times Tommy? Tommy two times? Buns. Buns. Tommy Buns. <laughs> Tommy's 
personality. God, that was a minute 12. I feel like I was at fucking three minutes. Yeah, we all, all right. did. All right, guys, here's what I'm going to say. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. My goal in this podcast is to start listening more. I'm not going to change a Burtis interrupt this, but I'm going to start listening more. Okay. Okay. That's my goal in this podcast. My goal is to point out how often he doesn't do that. Okay. That's totally, totally cool. Um, Let's do, you know what we should do at the end of every episode? What? What did we learn about each other? Okay. Okay. All right. So you start with me. What did you learn about uh, me? Why don't we try it on the next episode? Why? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, what did I learn about you? I learned today that Tom, I just interrupted you. <laughs> I can't help it. I learned that Tom needed to fight for his personality. And that is why we got blessed with the guy we have today. A guy who just wants you to notice him, but doesn't want to interrupt you because he understands that dad, Vietnam is a lot harder. Mom, I understand that this American culture is confusing, but I do want you to be heard. I want to be heard. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. I learned that you have more health problems than I'm aware of and that you, uh, the amount of times that you can cite shitting yourself is really <laughs> alarming. Um, but that you also are a lot of the reasons why you are the way you are is for sure because um, I don't think that you were actually seen and paid attention to that much, you know, like when you got picked up from tennis camp and you fucking shit all over yourself and that your drinking uh, really brings out the uh, the personality that you want people to see you as having fun and you don't want it to ever stop and just keep the party going, let the buzz roll on yeah. and your liver will heal itself for there sure. There we go. There we go. And I'm 30 days sober. Unless it's scarring. All right. So that's it for us. If mine's scarring, yours is scarring. I'm Tom. He's special needs. And we will be back <laughs> very soon. Watch Hey Big Boy, Ball Hog, and our friend Crystalia has no pain out on Netflix. And see if you can figure out the joke. We talked Try about it a little see bit. See if you can tie it together. Yep. And then if you can, hit us up. And by the way, even if you find it funny and you can edit together the three of our specials into a joke you find funny, hey, hit us up with it. I would love to see the person that can edit the three together and get it get it right. That'd, That'd be, be hilarious, great. yeah. All right, that's it. That's it. I love you, Tom. Love you too, buddy. Bye-bye. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.